<laughs> Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. We're continuing our deep dive into the worst performing tanks in the game from tier 6 onwards, and we're at tier 10. And we've looked at the batch at 25T, the little tier 10 French light tank. Now we're on to what apparently is the worst performing tier 10 medium tank, the Leo 1. Hardly a surprise. Although it was a surprise to me. I already thought that the FV4202 would be performing slightly worse than this. But apparently no, according to Blitzstars, that ain't the case. Blitzstars has this one down with a 47.68% win rate after 1,127 battles. Now admittedly, that is slightly worse than that of the FV4202, which I really thought would be on the top spot and slightly better, worse than the uh, 121B, which is a premium tank. But, uh, did, so I am a bit surprised about that, although I'm also not surprised because, me personally, I struggle in the Leo 1. I just don't gel with this tank. Now you can see there, its damage per battle is 1,601. That is worse than the FV4202 and slightly worse, only a little marginally worse than that of the 121B. Its survival rate is only 26.54%, which is actually better than the 121B. And its kills per battle is actually better than the 121B and the FV4202. So what is it about the Leo that everybody seems to struggle in? Now look, I know the top players in the game really love this tank, and they can make it purr and sing like a little bird. But us average players out there, well, this tank is just one of those tanks that is very, very hit and miss. Not the easiest tank to play. And it would be easy to say, oh, the tank is trash. And it would be easy to say that it's all because of the armor. But is that really, really true? So we've jumped into our inspector, and this is what the armor profile of the Leo 1 looks like when it's facing off against a Type 71. That seems to be the go-to heavy in the game at the moment, so it makes sense to show you that. As you can see, okay, the Leo 1 is very lightly armored. It's not the best armor profile out there, but it is also quite trolly, and that's not too bad if we're being honest with you. I mean, okay, if you stick this thing front on, then yeah, you're wide open. And if you try to side scrape in this thing, well, you know, you need your head red. It's not an easy tank in that respect. It's got pretty decent gun depression, nine degrees. And if you stick it down on nine degrees and stick it over the ridge, well, nothing really changes. Um, but then again, you're not meant to be showing all of this lower plate, you know, this glacier plate at all. You're only meant to be showing the turret. But you can see here that the mantlet of the Leo is pretty, pretty thin. And this seems to be one of the reasons why people struggle in this tank. And you have a common theme in Blitz, especially with the player base, that they jump into a tank that's lightly armored. They see these fantastic replays, you know, seven, 8,000 being knocked out by the top players in the game in tanks like this. And then they go out and they stick it in places that it really shouldn't be stuck. And they have a terrible, terrible time in it. And therein lies the problem with the Leo. Again, it is not the tank, it's actually the player base. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna deep dive into its parameters. We're gonna have a look at it a little bit deeper. And we're gonna see if we can try and change some of the perception and the play style of the player base to actually make this tank shine like it really, really should. We've now jumped into uh, the garage and we're looking at the full parameters of this tank. Now the Leo one, comes fully upgraded already. You haven't got a, a tier nine gun or a tier nine turret. It's all tier 10, fully upgraded. Hit point wise, it has 1,908. That's not a lot of hit points, but it is a lightly armored medium tank. And you have to remember that. When you look at the armor, well, on the turret, on the front, you've got 52, on the sides, 60, and on the rear, 60. That sort of makes a, a sort of nonsense. You think there'd be more armor on the front <laughs> rather than the sides and the rear. The hull, 70 at the front, 35 on the sides, 25 on the rear. Moving down, it's got a pretty decent view range, but again, I've got it with optics, so just over 300 meters. Camo and concealment, it hasn't got the best camo, okay. 49, just below 50% there, uh, whilst it's stationary, 43 when it's moving, and only 10 when it's fired. 
after state when it's stationary by the way dpm is pretty nice 3724 per minute that is lovely it's got a reload time of shy of six seconds 5.8 seconds to be exact penetration values the ap which is its standard ammunition is 255 its heat 300 and it's HE 53, which always gets me confused because the RU has 118 and the RU is the tier 8 in this line and yet the Leo 1 has worse penetration. Hey, go figure. Moving down to the damage output, well, the AP is going to knock out 360, your heat is 300 and your HE is going to knock out 400, which isn't too shabby, notwithstanding its penetration. Aim time just below 3 seconds at 2.9. Dispersion 0 0.275, which is beautiful, let's be fair. I mean, this thing is a laser-guided precision gun. Gun depression, you've got 9 degrees going down, 20 degrees going up, so not too bad either. Speed, well, this is where the Leo 1 really comes into its own. Top speed, 65, which is brilliant for a medium tank. Reverse, 23, average, 39. Terrain crossing ability over the road, 182%, on the ground, 156%, and in water, 109%. So, as you can see, the parameters of the tank are giving you indications already. It's lightly armoured, it's got good mobility, and it's got an accurate gun. That should be giving you pointers, and those pointers should be, don't front line in this thing, be a sniper, and try to pick your tanks off and try to farm damage. And that is where a majority of the player base come on stuck. I see so many players just yolloing out and thinking that they can just, you know, use the gun with impunity up close and personal, and it ain't going to work. The playstyle of this tank is very similar to when we looked at the Leo PTA, which is the tier 9, worst performing tank. Anyway, let's see if we can sort of give ourselves a little bit of leeway and try to improve our odds. Let's firstly look at the equipment. This is my equipment loadout. At the moment, I'm running it with a gun rama. Why? Because the penetration, I think, is not too bad, to be fair. So if I stick a gun rama in, that just increases my reload time and increases my DPM, makes the tank perform a little bit better. Then, as per usual, using the defense system, I'm using the improved optics to get that view range up. If I put a camo nut on it, it doesn't really do much for me. I could use it with a camo net, well, what's the point? It's a medium, I'm meant to be mobile quite a lot. And when I look at the mobility side, it only gives me an extra 5%. It doesn't give me anything really. So I would rather run it with the improved optics. I've then got the enhanced gun laying device. Why? The velocity of these shells are not too bad. I do not need that supercharge. I'm then running it with the additional hit points. Again, only 108. But as we keep saying, 4% of nothing is still nothing. So, hence the reason why I'm bringing it with the hit points. I've then got the improved engine accelerator rather than the improved control. Why? Well, I, because I, I just want it to perform a little bit better. I've then got the vertical stab. I do not need a refined gun on this tank. This gun is super accurate already with super duper amazing dispersion. Don't need a refined gun. And then, as per usual, toolbox, high end consumables. Moving over to the consumables, at the moment I'm running it with the reticle calibration. Why? Why would I do this on a super accurate tank already? Um, because I want it even more super accurate. And now I've been toying with this one, playing around with it. I could run it with the speed boost, but it wouldn't really help. I could run it with another repair kit, which would help. But at the moment I'm running it with the reticle calibration, gives, gives me that bit more accuracy. I've then obviously got the multi restoration restore pack and adrenaline because i want that dpm to be you know when i need it i want it there moving on to the provisions well it doesn't come with a spore liner unfortunately running it with chocolate makes my crew work harder running it with the protective kit because why wouldn't you and at the moment i'm just experimenting with the improved gunpowder it just gives me that improved velocity which is why i'm not running it with the refined with the uh, supercharge because i don't need it this sort of helps out um it's active throughout the entire game so you know why not as i say it's either a toss-up between that or the improved fuel at the moment i'm just running it with this to see how it works my ammunition loadout well i've got 30 ap 20 heat and 10 he just for that peace of mind so that's the loadout i've got what's the tank like to play and what 
you know, sort of hints and tips and tricks can we utilize to get our gameplay better in this tank for Leo 1. Here we are on Vineyard rolling out in our little Leo 1. Now I've purposely put this replay in because the majority of the player base will generally play the tank like this. So we're going up to these ruins to try and get these spots. Now the thing is, once we've got a good view range, we haven't got the best camo. Remember that. So we come around the corner, we get spotted instantly by the Sheridan, who's got a good view range as well. And he puts a great shot into us and takes out a third of our hit points. That's already put us on the back foot. So I'm trying to reset the camo here. And then I need to really get out of this position because it's just no good for me. So I'm rotating back to where we started. No point going up north. I can see that they've got T Type 71 on the base and I know there's a Sheridan there. So hopefully I'm thinking, well, maybe they're in the town. So I'm going to come around the corner a little bit and they'll still be in the town and I can probably try to reset or put something onto this Type 71. Uh, I missed completely, uh, despite the fact that this has got one of the most accurate women in the game. And then I'm spotted and then boom, there goes another third of my hit point. And before I know it, I'm down to 289 hit points. And we're only in the first minute and a half of the game. Now, this is where you sort of start thinking, oh my gosh, the, the Leo is such a terrible tank. But you have to change the way you play. You have to change your game plan. So now I need to play this tank ultra conservatively. My aim now is to stay alive and to try and assist my team in winning this game. It's by no means going to be easy, not with 289 hit points and not with a tank that is paper thin. Now, I've already seen that there's a T57 Heavy there, there's a T62A there, the Type 71 is on the cap, and here comes the 60TP. We bounce the side of the 60TP, mainly because I'm not running calibrated shells, but I don't think calibrated shells would have made much of a difference there anyway, because he was turning his turret. So I'm resetting that camo yet again, and I'm just going to hang around this little dip, and I'm just going to try and work the dip as much as I can. There is the 60 again, he bounces me, he just glances my gun there, I think you'll find. And now I've got an AMX um, running up there, he shouldn't really be doing that, there are too many nasty tanks there. But um, fair play to the guy, he went up there and he tried to put a bit of pain in, and he got wrecked for his troubles. Now I've got our 60TP moving up, that's going to help us out. Down goes their six, um, one of their tanks, so that's nice. I tracked the T62A, again, reversing back out, trying to stay as conservative as possible. Now I can see the 60, we can take him down, and down he goes. Now if you look at the mini-map, which is over in that corner, you will see that there are two tanks coming through the ruins. Those two tanks are the Sheridan and the Progetto, and I'm mindful of that. I know the 71 is still on the base. The T62A is now out. So that means I can start to make a move, but I'm worried about the Type 71. He may have cross shots. The other tank I haven't seen, however, um, to be honest with you, the Sheridan is now gone. But the other tank I didn't see was the E3, and I don't know where E is. So I'm going to try and rush to the back of the map in the city area. So when I say rush to the back of the map, I'm going to park myself on this high ground in front of the town hall behind the waterfall or the fountain, whatever you want to call it. It's a fountain, actually. Trying to get shots on the Type 71, I can't. There is the Progetto, he's coming into view now. He's taking out our Grilla, but uh, he's maybe just sticking his nose out too much, and he does, so I take him down. There is the E4. So can I get a shot into his Polar? Unfortunately, no, I can't, despite trying desperately hard to do so. Let's change our position, try to get the back deck. No, we miss completely. Let's drop that reticle calibration. Can we get his Polar now? No, we can't. Oh, it's just painful. But, um, you know, all is not lost. We're going to stay in our little position. We've got the advantage now. We've got four tanks. And we finally take out the E4. So now it's four against one. And we've pulled this game back. Now, like I said, this is not setting any records. We're not setting the world on fire. The priority in this game was to survive and to try and help my team win. And I think we managed to do that at the end of the day, despite losing virtually all our hit points in the first minute and a half. And that is what the Leo can do. It can sit and it can farm, but you've got to be very, very careful with this tank, as you just saw there, because those hit points, they well, they just disappear rapidly. 
And when I say rapidly, you saw there, within the space of like 30 seconds, they, all those hit points are just disappearing. I'm quite happy with that game in the end. We won. Uh, I get a third class and I get three kills. So I was quite happy with that. Didn't do massive damage. In fact, one of the worst damage outputs there. But we did what we needed to do to ensure the win. And that, I think, is what matters. Now we're going to jump into Ace's Palms and we're going to play more for a traditional Leo 1 game. When I say a more traditional Leo 1, I mean it's a tank that likes to get out there, do a little bit of spots, then turn around and then just farm. Now we're going to do a little bit of both here. We're going to do a little bit of spotting. There we go. We spot uh, that tank. Um, and then we're going to go back and we're going to kind of farm and brawl at the same time. We're never really going to exert ourselves too much. We're not going to stick ourselves too much into harm's way. Now look, I can see that their heavies are going through the town area, although there is an E100 in the desert. Their Progetto is here. I don't know where their TVP is. He's unspotted. But, unbeknown to me, we are going to spot him very, very quickly. And it's going to be a scary moment. And there he is. So get a snapshot into the TVP and then go back into cover. This is the thing about the Leo. You've got to make sure that you've got plenty of cover around you. You cannot stay out in the open in this tank. You've got to be able to retreat where you can and have some form of safety. I have now spotted the Jaeger Rouge. I'm going to put one into him because I can see that the Progetto and the TVP are not going to advance. I can just farm this, uh, this Jaeger Rouge a little bit. I don't know if that one went through. I'm hoping it did. You never know with blind shots, so I'm going to put another blind shot in just to, uh, just to make sure. And anyway, I don't know if it goes in or not. I can now see that they're getting quite frustrated, the Progetto and the TVP. Progetto feels that he can take down the E5, so the TVP feels the same way. TVP pops around the corner. We are now able to focus on the Progetto. He's going to kill the E5, but they are going to take out the TVP. The E5 is asking for help. We're doing what we can. There's not much we can do there. But the Progetto now is overcommitted. This means they are now going to lose two of their important tanks in a brawl that they didn't need to do. That has frees us up slightly, and with that freeing up, we're able to now concentrate on that E100. The E100 is out in the open. Uh, we may be able to just farm him a little bit here, and yes, we are. We're just gonna put side shots into him with pretty much impunity. We're not gonna finish him off, uh, unfortunately. We leave him on uh, next to no hit points, and the Progetto is gonna come round and seal that deal. Not a problem, we haven't got an issue with that. Now, I can see there's only two tanks left, and one of those two is the Jaeguru. Now, I know where the Jaeguru is. I put shots into him earlier. So I'm going to move around and try and see if we can farm him a little bit more. He hasn't moved from his perch. Mm, pretty much a mistake. So, there we go. Shot into his side. Now into his lower deck. If we can, or maybe track it. No, we get into his lower plate. Now he's going behind a rock for his safety. Uh, that means I've got to relocate. I've got a problem with that. I'm just farming at the moment. And this is what the Leo likes to do. It likes to farm damage. It likes to farm damage from relative safety and, if possible, from distance. And as you see here, we've now knocked out 3.8k in damage. We've only taken one kill, but we've had a relatively good game. And this is where the Leo feels more in its comfort zone. It doesn't like being, you know, up front and up close and personal. It likes being slightly back, more of a second line defense. We get a second class there for our troubles. We can get a little bit of damage assistance as well. So this is the thing you need to remember, guys, when you're playing in Leo 1. Its comfort zone is not at the front. Its comfort zone is either, if you've got to be up close to the front, your comfort zone, they want you to be second line defense. Ideally, you should be at the back farming. You shouldn't be like in a TD spot as such unless you've got those shots, but it's a farmer and it farms from distance. As you see there, we do top damage. Pretty happy with that game. Now, just to emphasize how much of a farmer and how comfy the Leo one feels in those positions, I'm now going to show you a game that uh, my long-suffering teammate Ephelum uh, played when tuning with me the other day on the stream. So here we are with Ephelum in his Leo one, and we're on Kamal. It's a lovely little map. I love this map, to be honest with you. And Ephelum's put himself in a pretty, pretty good position here. It's He's not... Well, you could say, I suppose, he's quite far forward, 
foot. There you go, he gets the spot. The T-54 gets one into him. Ephelump is just going to retreat. Ephelump again has lost a third of his hit points in that little engagement. Not a good trade, but he now knows that there's an AMX-5100, there's a Tortoise, there's an E-100, there's a WZ-113 GFT, and there's a T-54. So Ephelump is just going to be sitting in this position now and doing what the Leo absolutely loves to do and that is just farm damage. And this is what he's trying to do here. He's not overexerting, he's not over pushing, he's not sticking his nose out too far. He is just farming that damage. And already he is at 1100, and he's gonna keep farming this AMX until the AMX is either A, retreating out of there and disappeared, or B, is just going back to the garage. And like I was trying to explain, this is what the Leo likes to do. This is purely the Leo's comfort zone. The Leo doesn't like to be up close and personal in brawling. It doesn't like being on that front line as such. It likes to just take its time. It's like all cats out there. You know, cats are probably some of the laziest pets you'll ever find. They want you to look after them. And when, you know, when they've got their nice little comfy spot, they're happy as Larry purring away. The Leo one is no different. It likes its little comfy spot. And when it wants to, if you annoy it too much, it can take a big swipe at you. That's exactly what the Ephelump is doing here. Down goes the AMX 5120. Now an IS-4 is pushing on me because I'm down there in the 215B. And Ephelump is now going to be able to farm an IS-4. And this is exactly what you, the type of gameplay you should be looking to sort of emulate when you roll out in your Leo 1. He has a move from this spot, and being in this spot, he's churned out 3,600 damage. I get wrecked there from a tortoise that I didn't realise was still at the back, but that's okay, because I've got a tomb mate in the form of Ephelum in a Leo 1, who's just now going to try and farm a tortoise. It, 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 you know, he's going to get big damage in this game at this rate because, you know, this is what the Leo is literally designed to do. He's finally going to move. He's going to cap the decap. Unfortunately, they have got the base points, so it's not like it's all easy and plain sailing for us. Oh, the tortoise makes a bit of a mistake, pulls around the corner. Now, Ephelump has knocked out 4.6k in damage. I know it says 4.2, but there was a blind shot that he, he managed to connect with. So, you know, he's not really travelled that far to take out this much damage. He's already taken three kills. If he can get this one in, he'll be killed him before. Unfortunately, he just have a bounty gun, but he's going to try for that same bracket again. I showed this, that weak spot in the Armour Inspector yesterday in the Tortoise video. Now he's knocked out enough damage, and he's done 1,700 assistance damage. And this is the thing. I mean, this is what you should be looking to achieve, guys. And as I say, this is what the Leo really likes to do. And Ephelon's now going to jump into the B-cap because, again, we're still losing on caps. He can't get a shot into the E100. He would like to. He just can't do that. So he's going to try and get the B-cap. If he can get the B-cap, does he have enough time to get the A-cap? He's hoping that the guy over there in the FV is going to be able to push down on the E100 and take him down. I think he's able to. Um, yes, he is. So the E100 is out for the count. It's just that WZ now. Ephelum thinks he's around the A-cap. Okay, ephelum has got to go for the A-cap anyway, and there he is. Bring it on. Only six hit points, but Heffer finishes that game on 4,639 damage. Or so it says, and it is. 4,639 damage, he gets four kills, he gets the top gun, and he gets the mastery. That is where the Leo loves to be. That is the Leo's preferred playstyle. So if you can do that, when you can resist that temptation to rush in and be mad yolo charge, you also can have a great game in the Leo. And uh, unfortunately the FV didn't get a mastery, I don't think, no, he got a first class but he churned out some decent damage as well. The thing that got it for Ephelum there is he did quite a lot of assistance damage, as you can see, 1,750. So if you're wondering why only a 4,600 damage game with four kills got Ephelum that mastery, it's not always about damage. It's about other things, active actions and also assistance. And with 1,750 assistance damage there, 
Now that really goes a long way in getting that ace. As you can see, that's what you can do with the Leo 1, and FLM is really showing you what the tank can do and how it can perform. The Leo 1 is a beautiful tank, don't get me wrong. A lot of the players struggle in it because, well, they just lose their hit points very, very quickly. Go back to what I showed you on Vineyards, it can be done. And you've then got to change and adjust your overall plan of action to try and get around that. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the Leo. I think the Leo is a great tank. Just because I struggle in it doesn't mean to say it's a bad tank or I don't like it. I do like it. I think it's a beautiful tank. It's just a tricky tank. And you've, like I say in all the videos, once you understand the weaknesses of the tank, you can play to those weaknesses first. And once you've played to those weaknesses, then you can play to the strengths. Resist the temptation of rushing headlong in like you saw with some of the players out there, especially on that Vineyards map. Resist that temptation. Do what Ephelump did, you know. Try your best to just hold back, stay back and farm from a position of safety. They, he wasn't sat at the back camping. A lot of people would argue that he is, but he's not sat at the back camping. What he is doing, he's sat in a position of safety and he's able to just farm everybody out. And that's what you can do with the Leo, everybody. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been the Leo 1. The worst performing tier 10 medium by all accounts. And I can understand why. All you've got to do, guys, is, as I said, be a little bit more conservative in this tank. And you will get on like a house on fire. But that's just my view. I want your view. Comments below. Below. You need to comment on these videos. You need to say what your thoughts are, what you think, and all that sort of jazz. Anyway, as I said, I've been Fujit. That has been the Leo one. And until the next time, remember, it's just a game, guys. And the idea of these videos is to try and make you rethink how you're playing and hopefully give you a little bit of a helping hand. Until the next time, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because, you know, that is what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun and being happy.